One of the most important components of a modern conference room is the ability to run a video conference call. Now, there are a lot of excellent video conferencing software platforms out there. WebEx, GoToMeeting, Skype, etc. But they all suffer from the same problem, your computer's webcam. This little guy simply can't provide the high quality features that you need for a professional video call. Historically, this leads system integrators to use a higher quality camera and feed its video to your laptop or PC. For instance, there are many USB cameras available, but these have their own inherent difficulties. USB isn't designed for long cable runs, so you need to implement USB extenders, which are expensive and can't be field terminated. Integrating multiple USB cameras requires additional pieces like USB hubs and USB switches, and it starts to feel needlessly complicated. Another alternative is to use HDMI cameras, which bring their own pain points. HDMI is also impossible to field terminate, and the room now requires an HDMI video matrix, which will require a control system of its own. Not to mention that you're running HDMI and control and power. All of this can be made much easier. Meet the QSYS camera. This is my new friend, PTZ2060. How's it going? The camera is a QSYS peripheral, which means that all of its control is built into the designer software. And you can take all of those control buttons and put them on the same touchscreen device that you're already using to manage all the audio in the room. Plus, it's a PoE device, meaning it's powered by a single Cat5 cable. That means your installer is only running a single cable in the room from the camera to the network switch. That one cable sends the video, control, and power. And then QSYS manages the switching between multiple cameras. This allows for any number of cameras in the room to be delivered to any number of laptops and PCs. And how good is the quality of the camera? Well, we're filming with it right now. Let's take a look in the mirror right here. The camera can film up to full HD 1920 by 1080 up to 30 frames per second on the network. It also has an HDMI and SDI output on the back of the device that can produce up to 60 frames per second, which can be simultaneously used to feed video into hard codec VTC appliances, allowing the same camera to be used for both soft and hard codec systems. So now let's take a look at how you can build all of this inside the designer software. The QSYS cameras are located in the inventory section of designer version 5.4 and higher. You'll see that there are two models, the 20 by 60 and the 12 by 72 that offer different zoom depths and fields of view. Once you add one to your inventory, you can drag its status control components into the schematic. You'll see a new pin on this component, a video camera shaped pin. Like other pins, this can only be wired to another pin of the same shape. There's also a new branch of components in the schematic elements called video components. In here, you'll find a camera router, which you can use to switch between multiple QSYS camera video feeds. I'll wire the two cameras in my design to this router. You'll even notice that the wire is a different size and color so that you won't mistake this for an audio connection. I'm going to save this design to the core and run so that I can actually connect to the cameras. If you open the camera's control panel, you'll see all the controls you need to aim and focus the camera. Full pan, tilt, and zoom controls are here, as well as speed control for these features. By default, the cameras operate in auto AAA mode. That's auto focus, auto exposure, auto white balance to simplify operation in any lighting environment. At the bottom of this control panel, you'll see a preview window which shows you a JPEG image of what the camera is currently looking at. This preview window is refreshed once a second, so while it isn't a fluid live stream, it's more than enough for a user to frame up a good shot. So this brings me to an important point. The video stream doesn't actually enter QSYS. QSYS simply manages and controls the camera. The video stream itself is routed to a USB bridge. That USB bridge is then connected to your PC or laptop via a standard USB cable. So where is this USB bridge? Well, one of them is located inside the Core 110F. If you go to your Core's properties, you can enable a USB video bridge. This will create a new component in your inventory that you can add to your schematic. 
This bridge only has an input video pin because the output leaves the core and is delivered to your PC via any standard USB cable. Your PC will detect this as a USB webcam, which can be automatically used by most teleconferencing softwares. The core's USB bridge is great if you're going to connect to a PC that's in the same rack as the core already, but oftentimes meeting participants are going to want to bring their own laptop and connect there at the table. So in that case, you're going to connect to a I.O. USB bridge. This is a discrete peripheral device that can be located underneath the desk or in any other convenient location. This device is also powered by a single Cat5 cable and is designed to bring the USB port from QSIS as close to the user as possible. In the software, you can add this I.O. bridge from the inventory panel under peripherals. Add an I.O. USB bridge to your design, and let's take a look at its properties. Just like the core, we can enable a video bridge, drag that bridge into our design, and wire our cameras to it. If you have multiple outputs like we do now, we could send the same camera stream to each one, or they could each get their own choice of inputs. Again, as far as your video conferencing software is concerned, it's only getting a single webcam connection from the USB bridge, even though QSIS can route as many different input sources as you want to this bridge. All of the routing and control is managed within QSIS, and your laptop is never the wiser. And don't forget to use that USB audio bridge as well. All of the audio in your conference room, including all the processing and echo cancellation you're providing for your conference room's microphones, can all be sent to the USB audio bridge and delivered to your laptop as well, at the exact same time and on the exact same cable as the USB cable you're already using for video. This single connection gives your laptop access to the high quality video stream as a default webcam and the audio as a default speakerphone, which means a user only needs to plug this single cable in and their teleconference software will automatically use all the features of your QSIS conference room. A few final things we glossed over that I want to point out. If you open the video bridge control panel, you'll see it looks just like the camera's control panel. Rather than control each camera's original source, these controls actually look backwards through the camera router and will make adjustments to whichever camera is currently active. That means you could place just these controls onto the UCI rather than require a different set of pan, tilt, and zoom controls for every single camera. Also, be aware that there are a couple other tabs in this control panel. The Camera Imaging tab gives you access to more complicated image control, such as exposure, white balance, backlight compensation, and different video formats. The Status tab gives you basic connection feedback and other information. The camera provides two streams of different qualities, as different video conferencing softwares have different requirements. You might also choose to go to the camera's properties and change its IP streaming property to multicast. This will allow other applications such as VLC or QuickTime to pick up your video stream, albeit with a bit of a latency buffer. To do this, go to the camera's control panel and find the streaming URL. This is what you'll use for those other programs to receive the stream. Finally, there are some additional camera controls in the administrator under the Cameras tab. You can change the resolution of the IP streams here, as well as upload custom images for the camera's offline screen and privacy screen. The privacy screen is displayed when you engage the privacy mode in the control panel. This effectively turns off the live camera and also instructs the camera to turn around and stare at the wall. That way the local participants don't think that they're still on camera. So that was a quick overview of the QSIS camera. Did you have a good time, PTZ 2060? Good, that's what I thought. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.